Hi guys, welcome back. Continuing on where we left off with the IV generator tool. Um, in this video, we're just going to do a little bit of tidying. We're going to do a bit of work on the stem, and then we're going to start to look ahead how we can start to cluster these up and create some randomness. Um, so let's get started. First thing I want to do is tidy up all these UV transforms here just by dropping them into a subnetwork. So I'm going to drop them in there, tidy up this for each loop a little bit, make it a bit more readable. Call that subnet UV transforms. Okay, and then tug this whole sort of mini network over here. And then if we want to be super organized, we can put that section into a, a network box and call that leaves, just so we know where we're at. Okay. Another thing I want to do, this quick material here is purely for our reference in Houdini. We're going to be building this obviously in Unreal Engine, so we'll be creating a, a material assignment in Unreal. But just for our references, I'm going to fill out the rest of those uh, channels. So I'm going to drag the albedo map into base color, take the normal map into normal, just make those, uh, those connections with what you've got on disk with the texture files that you're using, purely for our benefit. Uh, in Houdini just so we can see what's going on. So with that let's take a look at the um, stem. So I'm all the way back up at L systems here. So if, if you remember we split off the leaves in the stem so currently we sat here with this piece of geometry that represents our, our stem. So what we can do is we can pass along some of the attributes that the L system has generated for us into the geometry as point attributes. And the way we do that is just activate point attributes here. And that will give us a bunch of really, really useful attributes that we can use in nodes further down the line. Uh, obviously, the, the key one that we're interested in is the width of the stem. So the, the, the way that we've programmed the L system to cope with the width of the, of the uh, frond as it progresses down, we can make use of that in a, in a sweep node. Okay, so let's drop down a sweep node. Okay, and then just go to the surface shape here. Now, initially you could do uh, a round tube and just drop the radius a little bit. Obviously, the, the, going this approach is obviously going to create quite a lot of geometry, probably too much for a game. Um, maybe if you wanted to do a, a different LODs for this model, you could perhaps look at ways of doing um, a, a geometry based stem, probably too you know probably too many polygons currently we're looking at 384 there but once we duplicate that a few times so what i prefer to do to keep it super lightweight is set this over to ribbon and again just drop the columns down to the lowest value and you get something like this so this is obviously super lightweight and you know once you start duplicating this a couple of times um you know you, you can't tell the difference that it's not geometry and especially if you wanted to go further down the line of you know working um, normal maps into this to to really sort of sell the sense that this has got some depth but for this example we're going to keep it super simple super lightweight so we can really go to town with duplicating and creating randomness without blowing our polygon budget completely out of the water all right so with that what we want to do is we want to take that width attribute that we've got on all our points coming from the L system node and we want to drive the width of the sweep node okay now the sweep node understands a lot of point attributes natively uh, and if we jump to the construction tab and make sure we're transforming using curve point attributes we can use that width attribute to drive the width of the ribbon okay and a really quick and hacky way to do it is just to drop down a wrangle node and the sweep node understands the p scale attribute okay so we can reference that directly and then just map that width attribute onto it okay and then what we need to do then is just what i like to do is just add a multiplier into that so i've got a little bit extra fine control so i'm going to put down a channel reference to a channel called multi and then just hit this button here to create those channel references. We'll set that to one. Okay, and then jump across to our sweep node. And we just need to boost up that width a little bit so we can start to see our geometry coming back. And you can see 
that the uh, the the sweep node is inheriting that width value from our L system, and we're starting to get the the geometry back. Again, like I mentioned, very very lightweight. This is only forty eight polygons, and our leaves are twenty four polygons, next to nothing. Perfectly suitable for foliage to be duplicated as many times and instanced in engine pretty much within reason <laughs> um, pretty much as much as you need awesome so with that there's a couple more things i want to change regarding our l system so i'm just going to merge these two streams together just to sort of give me an idea of where we are with it so i'm going to merge in our leaves and our stem yeah i'm just looking at it i think these little branches look a bit goofy at the moment we probably want to shorten the length to bring the leaves in a little bit so we can go back to our L system into the rules section and when we break off to create this branch we don't want it to go that far we we want it to go half distance say sounds like a good place to start so if we find where our branch starts and if you remember our branches are indicated by these square brackets where we go forward so using the F command we can replace that F with a capital H and if you remember that's a half step okay so if we replace that and then remember to play replace it on the other side so where it's minus F minus H now you can see we've brought in our leaves a little bit closer to the stem and we're starting to get something a little bit closer to our reference imagery okay what I will do is because our L system expression is getting quite complex already. I'll just leave it on screen there for a few seconds. So if you are kind of struggling with uh, with where you're at with it, we can take a, a screenshot of it now or, and, and just sort of make sure you've copied it correctly. So everything seems to be working fine. We've got some nice randomness going on uh, with our leaves and our randomness we can add in using our sliders on the L system asset. We've also got some tropism as well so we can start to play it. and you can hopefully start to see how flexible these systems are when you know creating randomness and creating variety. The next thing we want to look at is how we can clump these all together um, in a way that we can start placing them in our engine. Obviously we don't want to go in there and start placing individual fronds of, of ivy. We want to create clumps of them. So we're going to investigate that over the next couple of videos, how we can use uh, point attributes to create randomness. But ultimately what we're going to do is I drop down a line. Okay, And this line, we're going to copy our L system IV onto this line. So I'm just going to make a few changes to the line node. I want it to travel along X. Okay. And I want the origin to be half the length. So I'll just take that relative channel reference, divide by two, and then subtract that value. Okay, so that is just making sure that the line is sat at the midpoint. So if I change the length, it's always changing. Okay, so let's just set this to two meters. Remember, remember in Houdini, we're dealing in, in meters. So two meters seems like a quite a, a big bush of ivy if you sort of imagine it there in front of you um, and what we're going to do is just copy that system to, to points on this line okay so let's just set the point value up to well in fact no let's leave the point value at two and drop down a resample node to give us a little bit more control and if you can see now with the resample node it's given us a bunch of points evenly spread out and we can change the value there of those points where, where we have them. So there we've got about 10 points. All is looking good. And if we take a copy to points node and plug the geometry into our first input and then our points into the second input, you can see we start to add together and copy on those I believe. So we can st start to change the width we can reduce that to create more copies now obviously there's a very glaring obvious problem with this system it's copying them just as is what we need to do 
is start varying those copies. We need to start manipulating those copies so that we can create longer fronds, shorter leaves, bigger noise, all that good stuff. We need to randomize all this as we copy it. Okay. So this is another great opportunity to use a for each loop. Okay. But this time we'll be using a for each point. Because what we want to randomize, we want to place some random attributes on each of these points individually. And then when we copy the geometry onto them, the geometry will read those attributes and apply the changes. So we'll get nice variety and nice randomness throughout. Okay, so that's the plan for the next video, possibly even next two videos. We'll see how we get on. Um, but hopefully I will, uh, I'll see you there. Thank you very much.